Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to see each and every one of you on this beautiful Sunday morning as we gather together to worship the Lord. We gather together to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. That name is above all names. We gather together as God's wonderful people to fellowship one with another, to lift up one another, to pray for one another, to make that difference in one another's lives. We gather together as God's wonderful people to worship Him. Hymn number 496, Sweet Hour of Prayer. This morning, as we go to the Lord in prayer, we want to remember all those that are sick, those that are shut in. We ask the Lord to continue to be with each and every one of them and to touch them and to make a difference in their lives. Uh, we continue to lift up uh, Shannon Reynolds. She had her gallbladder removed this week, and uh, Don said she was a little sore, but she was doing okay, and so we lift her up. And then Don uh, had some surgery this week, and we asked the Lord to continue to be with him and continue to heal him, and we just give the Lord the praise and the glory where he's brought him this day. We want to lift up the family of Carol Dean Stone and the death of his uh, Son, and we just ask the Lord to be with that family and 
to watch over them and to be with them in a mighty way. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace this day, Heavenly Father, there are many different ones that's upon our hearts today. Lord, we just ask that you might be with each and every one that is in need of your touch today, Lord. We just ask that you watch over them and walk with them in a mighty way. Heavenly Father, those that are recovering from surgery, we ask that you might be with them. And those families that are bereaved, Lord, we just ask that you continue to watch over them and be with them in a mighty way. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. We thank you for your love and your concern for each and every one of your precious children. Heavenly Father, we thank you for watching over us and being with us in such a mighty way. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who gives us the hope for each day. He gives us life, and he gives it to us abundantly, and he gives us that assurance of eternal life. Heavenly Father, thank you for that hope and for that assurance that you give unto each and every one of your precious children this day. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those that are sick, all those that need your touch, those in the nursing home. Lord, wherever they are, we ask that you just be with them in a mighty way. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those that are gathered here today. And Heavenly Father, you know everything about us and you know what we're going through. You know our struggles. And Lord, we just ask that you might be with each and every one of us gathered here today, that you might meet our needs and Heavenly Father, we'll continue to give you the praise and the glory. Thank you for your precious Holy Spirit that comes to fill each and every one of our hearts, to guide us and direct us in the way that you would have us to go. And Heavenly Father, we ask that your Spirit might be with us, that your Spirit might draw us closer together as we love one another as you have loved us. Heavenly Father, Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and for the prayer in which he prayed on many occasions. He taught his disciples to pray, and we pray this morning as your children, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hymn number 314 in the garden.
Our Psalter reading is the 23rd Psalm as we read from 754. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside the still waters and he restores my life. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. By way of announcements that we will collect school supplies for the Great Corn Orange School. We only have two Sundays to get the job done and I know you'll come through. We're just doing five items and those are listed in the bulletin and also on the box. So uh, I know that uh, this week uh, You'll make that difference as we reach out to make that difference in the lives of those children as they begin to go back to school. So, so keep that in mind. And then we uh, have a note from the memorial home. Sometimes we wonder uh, what the pennies from heavens are all about, and it goes to the memorial home, and it says, thank you for your donation of $200. We will use it very wisely. Thank you again, Sarah Dixon, Lawrence Memorial Home. So that's where the opinions of heaven goes. And it's amazing how they add up. Uh, so, uh, And then also this week we received in the mail where we paid 100% apportionments for last year. And I appreciate uh, the church being able to do that. And making a difference, not only in this community, but worldwide. And so uh, usually we get it at Charge Conference, but it came in the mail, so I'm not sure about Charge Conference. I don't know when we won't have it, or don't know if we won't have it, but when we find out, we'll let you know. Uh, so, uh, but I'm thankful that in these difficult times, we're able to reach out to the memorial home, we're able to pay our apportionments, and we're able to help the school, and we're able to help the food bank. Uh, you continue to allow the Lord to use you and to make a difference in the lives of people, and that's what we're all about. That's what the church is about, making a difference, leading people to know the love and grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gifts that has been given this day. And Heavenly Father, we ask that these gifts be used to continue to make that difference in the lives of people, that they might come to know your Son, Jesus Christ, in a personal way. Heavenly Father, that they might know him so that they may have eternal life. Heavenly Father, may these gifts continue to make that difference in the lives of people all around us. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every one of these that continue to give the gifts that makes that difference. Without their help, Lord, we could not move the kingdom forward. But Heavenly Father, because of their love for you as they continue to give, as they continue to make that difference, Lord, we ask now that you might bless each and every one of them. Heavenly Father, bless them and bless the gifts. 
And we ask it all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Would you stand for the doxology? In the Gospel of Matthew, the 14th chapter, we're reading just two verses, verses 22 and verse 23. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there all alone. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this scripture and for the message that you have given unto me this day as I break the bread of life and to your wonderful people. Heavenly Father, may every word that flow from my lips be pleasing unto you. And Heavenly Father, these are your precious children who have come today to hear the bread of life. Heavenly Father, may their hearts and meditation thereof be pleasing unto you. Heavenly Father, we ask that each and every word might be anointed by your Holy Spirit that is spoken 
and every word that is received may also be anointed by your Holy Spirit. We ask it all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Our subject today is how important is prayer in your life? What part does prayer play in your life? Jesus gives us a tremendous example throughout the Bible how important prayer is for each and every one of us and why we should have a prayer life that we continue to keep in communication with the Heavenly Father so that we can receive directions for our lives and how God would want us to go. That the Holy Spirit might come and speak on behalf of God. The Holy Spirit does not speak of himself. He only speaks of what God would have him to say to us. And so this morning as we keep in communication with God through our prayer life, then it allows the Holy Spirit to come in to lead and to guide our lives. Now Jesus had just fed the 5,000. The scripture said he looked upon them, he had compassion on them, and when the evening came, he fed the 5,000, not counting the women and children. And so he sent his disciples away across to Capernaum through the Sea of Galilee, and he dismissed the crowd, and he went up into the mountainside to pray. Now why would Jesus go up into the mountainside to pray? He would probably go up into the mountainside to pray, to thank God for allowing the Holy Spirit to come and to help him to to break the bread and the fish and to be able to feed the 5,000. Jesus Christ, throughout his ministry, depended upon the Holy Spirit to help him along the way. And that's why Jesus was in constant communication with the Father. And every time he would face a situation, he would always go to the Father. And he would ask the Father what he needed to do in order to carry out the will of God. Jesus, while he was there on the mountain praying, he knew that the disciples were out on the Sea of Galilee, and he knew that the storm had came upon them, and he knew that they were in the midst of the storm. But he continued to pray to the Father so that, that those disciples would be able to go through the storm and he would come to them on the storm and then he would calm the storm. But you see, there are times in our lives when Jesus knows it's important for us to go through the storm. The storms of life strengthens us. And so Jesus allowed those disciples to go through the storm but he was praying for them. He was watching over them as they were going through the storm. And each and every storm that we go through, Jesus Christ is watching over us. Jesus Christ is praying for us. Jesus Christ is seeing us through that situation. The greatest prayer of all is found in John chapter 17. And it's a model prayer. It's a prayer that we all should go by. It's the prayer that Jesus prayed. And I want to share it with you this morning. And if you'd like to follow along, John chapter 17. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. And thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, 
the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thine they gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Father, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that have gave me, I have kept. And none of them is lost but the son of partition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but that I should keep them from all evil. They are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. Sanctify them through the truth, for thy word is truth. And thou hast sent me into the world, even so I also sent them into the world. And for their sake I sanctify myself, that they may also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for thee alone, but for them also which shall believe on me throughout the world that they are all may be one as thy Father are in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and has loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and thee, have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherein with thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. In this prayer, Jesus prays to the Father that the Father might glorify him as he was glorified before the foundation of the world. He also prays for the disciples that they, even though they're in the world, that they might not be part of the world and that he might keep them from all evil. And then he prays for each and every one of those that believe in him, that we might be glorified also. And if we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, then one day we will be glorified. We will be with Jesus Christ in heaven. We will spend eternity with him, and we will have a glorified body. Jesus also, when he ate with the disciples in the upper room, 
He knew that he was going to the cross and he went out into the garden of Gethsemane and he took several of his disciples with him and they went a little farther and Jesus knelt down and Jesus prayed, Father, take this cup from me, but nevertheless, thy will, not mine, be done. And the angels came and worshiped with him. And then Jesus prayed again. And the scripture said that when he prayed, sweat drops of blood came from him. Jesus prayed so hard for each and every one of us. But Jesus knew in the end that he would have, to, he would do what the Father wanted him to do in order that the world might be reconciled to God, that Jesus Christ would go to the cross and pay the sin debt for every one of us, and he would atone for every sin on Calvary's cross. Jesus would go to a mock trial, and then Jesus would be nailed to the cross. And there, as he hung on the cross, Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And so we see throughout Jesus' life, many times he went alone to pray. He would pray that, that the Holy Spirit would help him to be able to carry out the will of God. And then in the end, he prayed for us that our sins might be forgiven. And then as we take a look at the life of, of the, the disciples, when they came to Jesus and they asked Jesus to teach them to pray, Jesus taught them the Lord's Prayer the prayer that we prayed this morning, the one that we pray that recognized God as the creator, that God has created everything and everything that was created was created by God. And we praise him and we thank him for not only for the daily bread that supports us for each day, but for walking with us each day and being with us each day and watching over us each day and allowing the Holy Spirit to come and to be with us and guide us each day. Also, to forgive us as we forgive one another. He forgives our sin as we forgive one another's sin. And we ask him to lead us not into temptation, but to keep us from all evil as the kingdom of God is, it is in the kingdom of God, so it is here on earth. The scripture says that Jesus said unto his disciples, don't be like the Pharisees. Don't stand on the street corners and pray out loud. Don't be seen by people but simply go into your closet and shut the door. And when you get the light turned on, then the Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Folks, we don't have to make a big scene out of prayer. He was telling those disciples, just simply go to yourself and pray. And the Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. We see those disciples in that last 10 days as Jesus was going back to the Father. He said, go into Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit to come and pray. And they gathered in that upper room and those disciples prayed for 10 days. And then the Holy Spirit came upon them on the day of Pentecost and filled them with all power. We see the lives of those disciples that were changed. 
as they went out into the world to make a difference. It was their prayer life that gave them the power and the strength and the presence of the Holy Spirit to be able to carry out the work of God. This morning, it's important for us to have a prayer life. It's said that most people pray less than one minute a day. Usually when we pray, it's in a crisis. When something happens to our family or we get sick or somebody in the family gets sick or there's an accident, we pray and we ask for the prayer chain to, to pray for us, which is intercessory prayer. Intercessory prayer is, is very important for it makes a difference. The, the prayer of a righteous man makes a difference. When I called Don yesterday morning uh, to ask about Shannon, he told me how she was doing, and then he said, Preacher, pray for us. We're looking for an 81-year-old woman with d dementia. I'm down here in Joanna. You see, it's important for us to be able to pray for one another, to intercede for one another. And for it to make a difference. Folks, I believe that if we would pray on a regular basis, that God would hear our prayers and God would send the Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us in the ways that he would have us to go. And the Holy Spirit will only share with us what God wants us to know. And so as the Holy Spirit guides us and directs our lives, it's important for us to be in constant communication with the Father. How can we know what God wants us to do unless we communicate with God? And we communicate through our prayers. Every morning, I pray for each and every one of you. I pray that whatever your need might be, God will meet that need. Every night, I pray for each and every one of you as the family of God, as a family, I pray for each and every one of you. That whatever your need might be, and whatever you're going through, God might make that difference in your life. And I believe that if we pray for one another, and I believe if we continue to communicate with God, we would not find ourselves in the situation that we're in, in the world in which we live today. I believe that through prayer and the Holy Spirit that we would be more like Christ rather than the world. And so this morning, I encourage each and every one of you to have that kind of prayer life, to take that time to pray and ask God what he would have you to do and what God would want you to do that day. And so that the Holy Spirit might come and fill each and every one of your hearts and guide you in the way that God would have you to do. Our closing hymn is 420, Breathe on Me, Breath of God.
Heavenly Father, Jesus showed us how important prayer is in each and every one of our lives. He prayed on many occasions, and he taught his disciples to pray. And those disciples prayed and went out and changed the world. Heavenly Father, help us to be able to pray and to pray for one another and lift up one another, that the Holy Spirit might come and dwell in each and every one of our hearts, that the Holy Spirit might guide us and direct us in all the ways that you would have us to go. Heavenly Father, help us that we might have that kind of prayer life that you would want us to have. Heavenly Father, we ask it all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.